Acts chapter number 1, we'll begin reading verse number 8. The Bible says, But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you for the good singing. We thank you for the blessed hope that we have in Christ Jesus. Lord, we're not going to heaven uh, because of mansions. We're going to heaven because of him. But one of the added blessings in knowing him and being saved by him is not only uh, will we get to spend eternity with you, but Father, we will have uh, uh, mansions in that land. We'll have uh, many celestial sights that we can't even fathom at this point in our lives. Uh, but one day there'll be reality and we're looking forward and uh, longing for those days to see what you've gone to prepare for your bride. And what a blessing that's going to be. Lord, what a blessing it is to know you and serve you even today. Now, Father, thank you for the reading of the Word of God. I pray you'd bless it. I pray that, Father, you would certainly uh, illuminate the Scriptures to our hearts and our minds. Uh, may we, Lord, glean from them. May we grow by them. May we uh, share them with a lost and dying world to let them know that Jesus loves them, that he died for them, that he longs to save them. Father, I pray you'd bless those sitting out in the parking lot, uh, uh, listening on their car radios. I pray, Father, for those that are watching the live stream, you'd bless them and help them. Uh, these few in the building, bless and help them. And Father, may we all glorify you and appreciate you and certainly give you the place you so rightly divide or, or deserve in our hearts. Uh, Father, I do pray if anybody's watching unsaved, uh, they get saved. I pray for saved folks, God, that you'd send revival to their heart and soul even tonight. Now, Father, we love you. Thank you for first loving us. Uh, thank you for the Bible. Thank you for the people of God. Thank you, Lord, for the promises of God. Just thank you for being so good to us. Uh, and Lord, thank you, Lord, that uh, uh, Lord, none of our church that I know of has had this COVID-19, uh, not the least to the part where they were hospitalized or faced uh, uh, having to be on a ventilator or anything like that. Thank you for protecting and watching over your children. Uh, and thank you for being a good God. Bless now, and we'll thank you and praise you for it. For it's in the holy and wonderful name of the Lord Jesus we ask these things. Amen and amen. I want to draw your attention to a couple of things from these verses as a way of introduction. I want you to notice, first of all, the proclamation from Jesus. He said in verse number 8, But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Uh, notice this proclamation, uh, 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 my dear friends, uh, was not just wishy-washy or something that uh, uh, might come to pass. He said, ye shall receive power uh, after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. If there's any indictment uh, of our day and age uh, is folks uh, 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 that are saved, sealed by the Holy Ghost, uh, blood washed, uh, they don't have the power of God in their lives. Uh, 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 they have got so allowed so many other things to come into their life uh, that they have allowed the power of God to dwindle. Uh, uh, many folks don't even have the power of God to help uh, uh, propel them uh, uh, to be what God would have them to be. God help us uh, uh, to experience revival uh, where the Holy Ghost of God is allowed uh, 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 to do His office work in our hearts and our lives uh, that will not only have the touch of God in our lives uh, but will have the power of God residing upon us. We see the proclamation he said, ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. But notice, if you will, the purpose. He also said, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and on all Judea and in Samaria and unto the utmost part of the earth. Uh, 
Notice the reason for the power of the Holy Ghost uh, was for them to be witnesses. Can I say tonight, uh, the reason a lot of God's people don't have power from God uh, is they're not uh, longing to be a witness uh, for the goodness and grace of God. Uh, if you desire uh, uh, to see people saved and you have a desire to tell folks about the goodness of Jesus, uh, the Holy Ghost will empower you to do so. Uh, uh, but when most Christians tonight uh, are only interested uh, in temporal things uh, and physical things uh, and things that just satisfy for but a season, uh, but they're not interested in eternal things, uh, no wonder there's no power. Now this is so important because this is the last thing Jesus said to his church before he ascended to go into heaven. He said and he proclaimed when you get the Holy Ghost you're going to have power and you're going to have power so you can be witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria and the uttermost parts of of the world. We see the proclamation. We see the purpose. Now notice the party in verse number 9. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. Hmm? Wouldn't that have been something? I mean, uh, uh, they, they, they were heartbroken the last time that he had parted from them because he went by the gray side. He had died on Calvary. They had forgotten all the times he had told them and prophesied to them that he was going to Jerusalem, be betrayed, and would die. And not only had they forgotten that, but they also forgotten that he said he'd raise again in three days. And for three days and three nights, they were tore up, their nerves were shot, and then he resurrected. And then they could, could hardly even believe the witnesses of those that uh, went down to the graveside, those women uh, on that uh, 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 first uh, Easter Sunday morning when they said, He's not here for he risen, as he said. Uh, and then he appear, appears unto them. Uh, and then, my dear friends, uh, he appeared to some 500 and did uh, 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 many things even after he resurrected uh, uh, to prove that he was who he said he was. Uh, now this time he's parting from them. Uh, their nerves aren't tore up. Uh, they're not upset. Uh, why? Uh, they realize not only is he the Son of God, he is God, uh, and he's uh, uh, parting from them and he's gave them this great proclamation. Uh, now notice the promise in verse 11 uh, while they're, they're watching him um, take off into the clouds they're sitting there gazing for him and the Lord sent uh, um, two angels and they said this in verse 11 which also said, You men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? You know, that's a question for our age. I've heard and I hear all the time, well, the Lord's coming back and people are waiting for him to come and they're looking in the clouds. Hmm? Well, why are you gazing for him? You ought to be expecting him to come, but that's not what we're to be doing. He said, Why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you've seen him go into heaven. Sure. They said, quit, quit doing that. You're supposed to be doing what he just told you to do. Get to Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, or most parts of the world, and go and be witnesses. Not hanging around here on the hillside. Hmm. But notice the promise that they gave. They said, this same Jesus which is taken up is coming back. Hmm. And can I report unto you tonight that we are much closer to him coming back than that day. We're much closer to him coming back than we were this time last week. We're much closer to him coming back than even this morning. I've got good news. He's a coming. He's coming back. It's impossible for him to lie. He said he's coming back. Uh, these angels testified uh, 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 under the law of witness and gave another witness that he's a coming. Uh, he's a coming. Hallelujah. And hallelujah, if you're saved, uh, you're going with him. What a blessing. I got to thinking about, they said, this same Jesus. This same Jesus. And I want to preach with God's help on this little thought. We shall see Jesus. Amen. We're going to see this same Jesus of the Bible. This same Jesus, the darling Son of God. Sure. We're going to see him. We're going to see him as he is. Huh? 
The Bible says that he that has this hope and purifies himself. Uh, uh, we don't know what we shall be. What we know, know that when he shall appear, uh, we shall see him as he is. What a blessing uh, uh, for that happy day. Uh, and uh, hey, I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to seeing him. Uh, I'm longing to see him. Uh, 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 what a day that's going to be when we get to see him. Uh, when he does come uh, and he does do what he said he would do. Uh, the scoffers have said for 2,000 years, where's the promise of his coming? I mean, uh, 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 people say, I've heard that all my life, that he's coming, uh, but he hadn't come yet. Uh, hey, hang on, neighbor. He is a coming. Uh, he's just waiting for the last one to get born again. He's just waiting uh, 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 for the Father to say to come, uh, and he's coming, and he's taking us home. Uh, uh, can I say, first of all, we shall see him in the sky. That's what it said there in verse number 11. It says, This same Jesus which is taken up from you in heaven uh, shall so come again in like manner uh, as you've seen him go into heaven. Uh, he's coming in the sky. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 4.13 But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, uh, that you saw or not, uh, even as others which have no hope. Uh, for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, uh, even so them also which sleep in Jesus... Uh, will God bring with him. Uh, for this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, uh, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord uh, shall not prevent them which are asleep. Uh, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven uh, with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, uh, with the trump of God, uh, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Uh, then we which are alive and remain uh, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds uh, to meet the Lord in the air. Uh, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Uh, we're going to see him in the sky. Uh, hallelujah. Every one of our loved ones uh, that's been buried, that's gone on before us, uh, their uh, spirit is in heaven. Uh, to be absent from the bodies, be present with the Lord. Uh, but the Lord's not only uh, going to redeem our soul. Uh, he did that when he saved us. Uh, but he's going to redeem our body. Uh, and when he comes uh, and he leaves glory, uh, hey, our loved ones are coming with him. Uh, and the the dead in Christ shall rise. Uh, them bodies that have been buried, uh, them bodies that have been scattered, uh, them bodies that have went back to the dust of the earth, uh, they're coming up out of the grave. Uh, and God's going to, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, uh, reunite that soul uh, with that body. Uh, and they're going to be changed uh, and transformed uh, and given a body like the Son of God. Uh, then we, which are alive and remain, uh, we shall be caught up uh, together with them. Uh, Paul said this corruptible uh, shall put on incorruption. Uh, this mortal uh, shall put on immortality. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, uh, the old songwriter said we shall rise. Uh, we're getting out of here, neighbor. Uh, uh, these old bodies uh, are going to be transformed. Uh, we're going to be given a glorified body. and We shall see Jesus uh, in the sky. What a blessing it's going to be. Brothers, I had no MS in glory. Uh, think about that. Every problem, every sorrow, every uh, 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 shortcoming you have, uh, when that trumpet blows, uh, uh, you get rid of it. Right. And you'll see him and you'll be like him. We're going to see him in the sky. Uh, what a blessing. But we're also going to see him at the seat of judgment. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5.10, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. The book of Romans chapter 11 says that we must all give an account of ourselves unto God. There's coming a day after we are raptured out of here, Brother Randy. Uh, 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 we're going to stand uh, at the judgment seat of Christ. Uh, now, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Uh, I'm glad I'm blood washed. Uh, I'm glad as I preach this morning, I've been pardoned. Uh, and I've been purchased. Uh, I've been promoted. Uh, I'm not of the rudiments of this world. Uh, uh, but listen, uh, that does not exempt me from judgment. Uh, now, listen, neighbor. Uh, I was judged for sin at Calvary uh, when Jesus 
saved me. Uh, he saved me from my past sins. Uh, he saved me from my present sins. Uh, he's even saved me from my future sins that I haven't even committed uh, because my soul has been sealed uh, unto the day of redemption. Uh, and First John 5 says, uh, My soul sinneth not. Uh, but I'm here to tell you, uh, even though my sin has been forgiven, uh, uh, what God did for me that day started me on a new path, uh, a new journey. Uh, it started me looking for a city whose builder and maker is God. Uh, uh, but I will give an account unto God uh, what I've done with his salvation. Uh, you see, my dear friends, uh, he saved me. Uh, he bought my salvation. Uh, he invested in me. Uh, and he is looking for a return on his investment. Uh, and I'm going to stand before him. Uh, I'm going to give an account uh, of all that he's blessed me with. Uh, I'm going to give an account of the scriptures. Uh, I'm going to give an account of my service. Uh, I'm going to give an account uh, of what I've done in my body since I've been saved, uh, whether it be good or bad. I'm going to give an account of every message I've ever heard. I'm going to give an account of every message I've ever preached. I'm going to give an account, my dear friends, of every time the Holy Ghost spoke to me and what I did with that. I'm going to give an account of every person that the Holy Ghost gave me the opportunity to witness to them, whether I did or whether I didn't. I'm going to give an account, neighbors, so are you. We will see Jesus. We're going to see him at the judgment seat of Christ. And can I say, it's not going to be one of them where we fall at his feet and beg for mercy. No, my dear friends, see, that day we're judged for our rewards. Those things that we have done, that have overcome, those things that we have been obedient in, that, my dear friends, will be gold, silver, and precious stones that we can lay at his feet. But those things that we've done amiss, those things that we've done uh, uh, to gratify the flesh, uh, those things that we have done uh, 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 that have uh, went uh, in disobedience to the Bible, and disobedience to the Spirit of God, we'll watch them burn up. They'll be wood, hay, and stubble. My dear friends, the time for mercy is now. And the time for judgment is then. We shall see Jesus. We're going to see him in the sky. And we're going to see him at the seat of judgment. Can I say about this? We're going to see him at the supper. Hallelujah. Uh, Revelation 19, verse 7. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb has come. Uh, and his wife hath made herself ready. Uh, and to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. Uh, for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. Uh, and he saith unto me, uh, Right blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. Uh, and he saith unto me, uh, These are the true saints of God. Uh, hallelujah, we're not going to the marriage fast. Uh, we're going to the marriage feast uh, we're going to go and we're going to dine uh, and we're going to sup uh, and we're going to have a time uh, with the darling lamb of God uh, with the bride of Christ uh, the Bible says she has made herself ready uh, uh, and it was granted unto her uh, uh, to put on a garment of fine twine linen uh, can I tell you tonight uh, uh, as much as I'm not looking forward to the judgment uh, the judgment is important because uh, the judgment Judgment purifies us uh, and makes us ready for the supper uh, uh, because uh, we were able to go through the judgment uh, and because uh, uh, we were able uh, uh, to give an account of the things done in our body. Uh, uh, it makes us ready for the supper uh, and we're granted that wedding garment of fine twine linen uh, that's reserved for the pure, uh, that's reserved for the holy. Uh, we can't don that garment uh, until we've been judged uh, and our works have been judged by fire. Uh, but hallelujah, when we get through that judgment, uh, hey, there's a coming a wedding. Uh, and there's coming a wedding supper. Uh, hallelujah, I don't know what they're going to serve. Uh, but I promise you one thing. Uh, it's going to be out of this world. Uh, it's going to be wonderful. Uh, uh, the taste, the flavor, uh, the way it's prepared, uh, the way it's served. Uh, everything's going to be wonderful. Uh, but what makes it most wonderful Wonderful uh, is the company we'll be in. Uh, we'll be with the four and twenty elders. Uh, we'll be with the bride of Christ. Uh, we'll be with the Lamb Himself. Uh, what a day it's going to be! Uh, we're going to see Him at the supper. We're going to, hallelujah, have that wedding garment on that reflects His holiness, that reflects His glory, 
and we'll sit down and feast with the king of glory. Huh? Can you imagine what it's going to be? Uh, maybe you get to sit across from the apostle Paul. Or maybe you get to sit across from uh, Andrew or Philip or Peter. Maybe you get to sit across uh, uh, from um, one of the other dear saints in the scriptures. Maybe you're next to Timothy or Titus, Philemon. Uh, maybe you're next to me. If so, just keep passing it. I want all that I can eat that day. huh? Can you imagine not only are we getting a feast there and the great company we'll feast with and the darling Lamb of God himself, but you realize in a glorified body, you'll never get bloated. You can eat all you want to eat and you still got room for more. Brother Brian, you even got room for dessert, huh? Hallelujah, I wonder if butter pie be there. Glory, huh? It'd be good, whatever it is. Uh, going to be wonderful uh, and we'll be there and with the Lord forevermore. We're going to see him, I'm telling you, at the marriage supper. Hmm? Can I say, some of the most intimate themes of life is, is displayed being around the dinner table. The harmony of the home is found when the family sits down for dinner. I don't know of a family reunion that you don't get together with the family and there's food. Maybe liberals and Yankees don't serve food, but Southerners serve food at family reunions. And there's always plenty of food. I mean, even in churches, we have dinners on the ground. We have uh, 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 anniversary services and serve food. We have special services and serve food. I don't know a Baptist anywhere that don't like to eat. Uh, 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 but I want to tell you something. Uh, we're going to put on a feast uh, and we're going to eat uh, and we're going to fellowship uh, and we're going to uh, enjoy the company. Uh, but we're all going to have one common theme coming out of our voice. Worthy is the Lamb. We're going to talk about how great he is, huh? We're going to see him in the sky, at the seat of judgment, at the supper. But can I say this? We're going to see him in his sovereignty. We're going to see him in his sovereignty. Uh, he's no longer the lowly Jesus. He's not the lamb born in the manger. He's not, my dear friends, the lowly prophet that didn't have a pillow to place his head. No, he's the king of glory. And I say he's Lord of Lords and King of Kings. And we're going to witness it firsthand. The Bible says in Zechariah 14. You see, while we are translated out of here and we are going through the judgment seat and then we are enjoying the wedding supper, there is a terrible, terrible ordeal going on on earth. You think the last month and a half has been bad? The fear of a virus, the fear of uh, going out in public, the mandates of what you can and cannot do by those in authority. You think it's been bad? The Bible says that the time that I'm speaking of is called the time of Jacob's trouble. And the Bible says there's never been a time like that. It is called great tribulation. That is going to be going on on earth. Total anarchy is going to be going on on earth as the devil unleashes his church here on earth. Uh, and the devil uh, has the antichrist and the beast and the false prophets uh, reigning on the earth uh, and destroying the souls of men and putting people in peril. While we are feasting uh, with the Lord, they are in grave, grave, grave depression on the earth but can I say the Lord Jesus is going to literally come back to this earth remember we rise to meet him in the sky he's literally coming back to this earth and he's going to rule and reign for a thousand years the Bible says in Zechariah 14 verse 9 and the Lord shall be king over all the earth and that day there shall be one Lord and his name one all the land shall be turned as a plain from Geba to Rimmon, south of Jerusalem. And it shall be lifted up and inhabited in her place from Benjamin's gate 
unto the place of the first gate, unto the corner gate, uh, and from the tower of Haniel unto the king's wine presses, uh, and men shall dwell in it, and there shall be no more utter destruction, but Jerusalem shall be safely inhabited. Uh, Revelation 26 of the same time period says this, Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection on such a uh, uh, the second death hath no power but they shall be priests of God and of Christ uh, and shall reign with him uh, a thousand years uh, we shall see him in his sovereignty uh, there's coming a time in that same chapter in Zechariah when Jesus literally comes back uh, he's going to land on the Mount of Olives and it's going to split in two uh, Revelation 19 tells us we're coming back with him uh, and he's coming back in the fierceness and the wrath uh, of almighty God uh, and we'll be with him on white horses uh, and my dear friends uh, he's going to sit on the king uh, 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 on the throne of David and uh, reside as a king over all this earth uh, 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 he's going to uh, uh, bind Satan for a thousand years going to destroy the antichrist the uh, false prophet and the beast uh, and he's going to rule uh, he's going to rule throughout the world uh, and we'll rule with him uh, he's going to rule with a rod of iron uh, and we'll carry it out uh, we're going to see him in his sovereignty. Uh, all those for a thousand years in this earth uh, and that'll be born in this earth uh, will know one thing of Jesus. Uh, he is the king of glory. Uh, hey, the Bible says uh, when he reigns there'll be peace on the earth. Uh, the lion will lay down with the lamb. Uh, the child will play over the hole of the asp uh, and we'll reign with him uh, and we'll see him in his sovereignty. Huh? He won't be the lowly Jesus. He is going to be the king of glory. And what a blessing that'll be hmm? to rule and reign with him. That's why it's important to rule and reign over your flesh now. That's why it's important to serve him now. That's why it's important to be faithful now. Because how faithful we are now and how well we do now will determine how we will rule with him then. We'll see him in his sovereignty. Then I thought about this. Hallelujah, after he reigns for a thousand years, we're going to see him sentence the devil. The Bible says in Revelation 20.10, And the devil that deceived them was cast in the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. We're going to see him sentence the sorry no good devil, have him bound and cast into the lake of fire. Maybe he'll let us kick him on the way out. Wouldn't that be a blessing? Uh but he's going to sentence the devil and cast him in the lake of fire forever and ever where he'll be tormented day and night. We're going to see it. Hallelujah. We're going to witness it. We're going to see him in absolute authority. We call him Almighty God. We will see him as Almighty God. What a day that's going to be, huh? I've said all that to say. Until then, we can still see him. We can see him in the scriptures. See, the just don't walk by sight. We walk by faith. And so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And can I help you something? If you look for him, you'll find him on every page in your Bible. You can see him in the scriptures. You say, Brother Doug, how do you know he's got white hair and eyes as flames of fire and voice of many things? How do you know that? Because the scriptures reveal that. How do you know he's going to reign for a thousand years? Because the scriptures reveal that. Brother Doug, how do you know we're going to have a, a, a wedding supper? Because the scriptures reveal it. But I also find we're in the scriptures. So you see his compassion for people. You see his tender mercy. You see his loving kindness. You see him uh, uh, not swift to act in wrath, but you find him long-suffering and patient. You can find word pictures of Christ in the scriptures throughout the Bible. We see him now in the scriptures. We see him as the merciful God and we also see him as the mighty and fierce God in the scriptures you see one day I'll see him as he is now I just see him in the scriptures I thought about this until then we can see him working in the lives of the saints it's a blessing and one of the things I'm looking forward to when we once again get to assemble is hearing the testimonies of the saints of God and hear folks testify how God has worked in their life 
how God has sustained them during this pandemic, how God has met every need, how God has been great even in the midst of adversity. Uh, you see, when God moves in the uh, lives of his people and God blesses his people, uh, uh, we can see the hand of God in the working of God and how he affects his people. The Bible makes it clear that uh, David said that he'd never seen the righteous forsaken or seed begging bread. Can I say, of the righteous, Solomon said, they shall be made fat. When we live by faith and we do right, uh, we are blessed by God. We can see the blessings of God in people's lives. That doesn't mean that uh, uh, they don't have problems, they don't have heartaches, but what it shows is how great God is in the midst of their heartaches, in the midst of their problems, in the midst of their struggles, in the midst of their strife. We can still see how great God is by how he works in the lives of his people. You know we have a church today because God worked in the lives of people. He worked in his saints. The gospel has been carried out from Acts 1-8 to this day from people who've been faithful. And many of them suffered greatly, but they were faithful. We can see how in the worst of times how great God is by seeing him in the lives of his saints. We can see him in the scriptures. We can see him working in the lives of his saints, and we can see him still pleading with sinners. Never lose sight of the fact that Jesus came seeking to save that which was lost. He is interested in the wayward. He's interested in the wicked. He's interested in those that are without. He is interested in us compelling them to come in He's interested in them being fitted for a wedding garment. He's interested in them being cleansed from their sins. Uh, he's interested in uh, uh, seeing those that cuss him now uh, get born again and their lives change only to praise him in the days to come. We can still see him pleading with sinners. You know why he's still, I know he's still interested in saving sinners? Because we're not out of here. When he gets to the point when he realizes no one else is going to trust him, that everybody's had an opportunity, and that folks have rejected him for the final time, the trumpet's going to sound, and we're out of here. Until then, you'll find Jesus pleading with sinners. It's his will that none should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And he's wooing, and he's pleading, and he's warning, and he's letting folks know he loves them, and he wants to save them. Many religions say if you're good enough, you'll get to go to heaven. Many people uh, uh, believe if they're good enough, people will love them. I've got news for you. The Lord said you don't have to be good. You can be sorry, no good, rotten as they come. He still loves you, and he wants to save you. And you can go to heaven if you'll put your faith and trust in him. And I say, one of these days we shall see him. But friend, don't wait till then. You can see him now. You can see him. You can hear his voice. Not his audible voice, but you can hear his voice in the scriptures. You can hear his voice uh, uh, in the uh, coo of a baby. You can hear his voice uh, uh, working throughout uh, this world. You can hear of him. You can see him. You can smell him. You can enjoy the things of God right now if you're walking with him and you're close to him. My dear friends, we shall see him, but you don't have to wait. You can see him now. And I'm looking forward in the days to come, seeing the greatness of our God working in such a wicked and useless world that we live in. Why? Because that's just the way he is. He just takes the base things and he confounds the wise. And I bless his holy name. So I want to leave you with this tonight. Take hope. He's coming. But until he does, take hope because he's already here in the lives of his people and through the person of the Holy Ghost. So yes, we're seeing. When's the last time you saw him? When's the last time you heard from him? When's the last time you witnessed his hand in your life? Friend, if it's not been today, why don't you get somewhere alone where you can call on him and say, Lord, I sure do miss you. I sure would like to hear from you and see you once again and see if business don't pick up in your heart and in your life. I'm hastening the day we get to see him. But until then, I'm looking around and seeing what he's doing and the effects of him, even in our day. Let's close with a word of prayer. Father, we bless you. Thank you for the 
wonderful word of God and thank you for the promise of your coming. Or one writer said it is our blessed hope. We're looking for that blessed hope in the glorious appearing of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, until you come, Lord, help us to yield ourselves as instruments in your hand. Help us to search the scriptures that we might find you. Help us, Lord, to uh, uh, hang around the saints of God that we can hear and see you in the saints. But Lord, help us to never lose sight of why you left us here. And that's to take the gospel into Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the world that we can see you still pleading with sinners to be saved. Help us to see many saved as a result of this pandemic. Help us to see you high and lifted up in our daily lives and our daily walk. And help us, Lord, to, to one day, as John said, even so come quickly, Lord Jesus, to see you in the sky. Father, we bless you. We praise you and we thank you for your goodness towards us. Lord, we're so undeserving, but we're very appreciative of all that you've done in our lives. Help us, Lord, to uh, uh, listen for the shout, but to look for sinners to tell them about Jesus. And we'll thank you for what you do, for it's in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus that we do pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for tuning in again tonight. I hope you have a blessed week. Lord willing, again Wednesday night, we'll be on the live stream. And uh, until then, tell somebody about the goodness of Jesus. And as always, keep looking up. He's coming soon. Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore, where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.